So one of the part of why base is just really the agency addressing what is wrong, not covering over and just kind of doing status quo is really coming in with innovative ideas, partners from the community that are invested, like Mr. Kelly and the DOJ. The DOJ, by having a consent decree, consent decree for our agency, is really pivotal for us for that turnaround because it's not just um, a document, but it's a, it's a legal document, it's a court document saying that you have to do this. Well, there's, re there's ramifications for all. So I, I think that's a good mechanism for, for our agency is really holding people accountable for those making so make those changes. And I, I believe it can be done. But it's really a it's really a broad, really in-depth, not a simple question to answer, but it's a, it's a really broad question. It's, it goes deep. I mean, we haven't we didn't get this way in a couple days or a couple years. This is something that's been going on for a long time. It's gonna take some work to get out of that and get it to where it needs to go. And, and just in terms of like goals and objectives for for like police staffing and hiring. I mean, the way we've talked about it is like four things. So more officers, obviously, um, but but it goes way beyond that per, per raised point. So uh, then more ideal officers. Um, how do you measure that? That's something that's a little tricky in terms of like assessing what, what that actually looks like. Our data scientist, Justin, who's sitting over there, is, is, is gonna be working hard to think about the sort of like measurement aspect of that. So more and more ideal. Um, more diversity in the department. Really, we want to see a department that demographically mirrors the city of Baltimore uh, as much as possible. And two key areas where there's uh, some room for improvement on that are, are in terms of African American officers and female officers. So those would be sort of the, the on the diversity piece where we, we're sort of focused. And then in terms of uh, actual officers from Baltimore City. So a smaller percentage of than you'd want to see. Uh, at the department, we're actually from Baltimore. That's why we're looking at things like this community nomination tool. So more Baltimore City hires, and we have we've actually just talked about setting targets in terms of recruitment and hiring for each of those four four pieces. Um, and uh, so that's you know, to accept that that's what you're asking. And if, if I could address that for a moment, then Ruth, you have to go over here. Um, but if I could uh, address that question, I think I think you you you, you hit on an excellent point because it's actually a conversation that I had with Dan um, the first time he and I got a chance to sit down and talk about what the IT was doing. You are hiring towards a particular goal or mission. So if your goal or mission isn't articulated clearly, it's hard to know what you're hiring towards. And so I think this is one of the reasons sort of a, um, uh, it's not an identity crisis, but I think it's an identity question that the police department is going through right now and the consent decree is helping to drive some of that conversation. What is the Baltimore Police Department supposed to do? Um, is success, you know, at one point, like Major Hans uh, said, unfortunately, there was a time in the Baltimore Police Department where success was measured by how many people got arrested, All right? Is that what we want the police to do? Um, a, a lot of times the police are measured by how many crimes they solve. So the clearance rate becomes the measure for success. Oh, but then they're also held accountable for what the crime rate is, period. So then the crime rate or the murder rate becomes the measure of success. And so, uh, but then it's also uh, what I call 911, how quickly did the police get there? That, you know, the response rate becomes, you know, so there are different measures and depending on who you talk to in the community, everyone may have their own measure because um, to Ray's point, he and I go through and I think Major Hans would even say, we've gotten to the point where unfortunately so many things have broken down at the community level, we're actually asking the police to do things police were never hired to do. So now, so is that the measure of success too? How many fights can you break up? How many kids can you get to go to school? How many kids, runaway kids, can bring back home, how many kids can you get off the streets who are throwing ball and hitting the neighbors? I mean, there's a whole lot going on, and so I think that it's a, it is very complex, um, and it's definitely a moving target, but part of the culture change, to Jasmine's question, I think part of the culture change in terms of the department, there also has to be a culture change in terms of the community to the police, for the community to make come to some consensus about what is it that we want our Baltimore Police Department to be doing. Because um, that's definitely an answer, a, a 
question that the Baltimore Police Department should not be answering on its own. So it should be answering in partnership with the community. Bank. So the piggy bank, like, that, that's, that's, let's see where you're going with the question. So okay. that's one of the things that the, the prior police commissioner actually talked about. We talked about the crime prevention and crime strategy for the police department. Is that we really should be doing the crime prevention strategy? Should be a combination because there's so many different neighborhoods in this city. But what's effective for that community or that or that neighborhood is how you base effectiveness. Like when I talked about that agents, like a certain community have an issue with drugs, or one having uh, issues with quality of life, or one having problems with as a business district, and I talk about we want to see more police checking our businesses. That's where you have that community piece to build a crime fight plan with the community and with the police department. But if there's 150 neighborhoods in Baltimore City, there should be 150 crime plans. That just, so that way you can go back and say, my service to that community, this is what they want, and then base it off of that 